by his praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, God, because you are so great. So our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Worthy is your name. Great is your name. Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we praise you today. Lord, let your kingdom come. Lord Jesus, let your will be done. Hallelujah, for us to be saved, for us to be delivered, for us to be healed, for us to be blessed, for us to be baptized in your spirit, for us to have prosperity and breakthrough in our physical, in our spiritual life. Lord God, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, and we thank you for giving us this day. Hallelujah, our daily bread. We lift up our leader, our shepherd, our pastor to you today, God. We thank you for the word from on high, God, that he will deliver to us today, God, that your will would be done, God, that we would be edified, that we would be empowered, that we would be equipped to do what you have called us to do in this last and evil day. God, we thank you for being a light in the dark world. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for giving us the strength, hallelujah, and the encouragement to continue on, God. Hallelujah. Not having a heart that's made of stone where we can't have a root, but God, you give us a heart of flesh and put your spirit in us, God, that we would keep your ways, that we would keep your commandments, that we would keep your statues. And you said if we would do so, we would be blessed. You said we'd be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Everything our hands would touch would be blessed, our coming out and our going in. So, Lord, keep us in your way. Hallelujah. That you would prosper us, God. Hallelujah. That we would be in good health. Hallelujah. So we thank you, God, for your daily bread. Hallelujah. And, Lord, we ask you right now, God, to forgive us for all of our sins, our offenses, our trespasses against you as you help us to forgive those who have offended and trespassed against us. God, free our hearts today, God. Hallelujah. As you soften our hearts, God, as you take out that heart of stone, God, help us to let go of the offenses, God. Help us to let go of the hurt. Hallelujah. To move forward, God, that our heart would be free and open to receive all that you have for us with no block, with no inhibition. But Lord God, that we would be free, hallelujah, to share the love that you give to us, God. As we receive, we pour out, God. So we thank you, hallelujah, for delivering us from the evil one, everything that's not of you, Lord God. We pray that it be removed in our lives today in the name of Jesus Christ. Every seed that the heavenly Father has not planted, we pray that it be uprooted just as your word says. And Lord, not just uprooted, but Lord, fill that void with your spirit. Fill that void with your love. Fill that void with your comfort. Fill that void with your help. Hallelujah. Fill that void with your strength. Fill that void with your counsel, your wisdom. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for all the things that you have done for us, God. We lift you up. We thank you for our faith. Lord God, we thank you for the lives that you have changed. Lord, we thank you for the lives that you will change. Lord, those loved ones that we are praying for, the ones that are not here today, God, we intercede today, God. I thank you for the word that was sent to me, God, today about pain, Lord God, as we feel pain. Hallelujah, God, you've given us that time, that reminder to pray for somebody else. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah, God, that you turn our pain into power. I thank you for the word today, God. I even lift up, hallelujah, Minister Henderson behind me, God, that gave me the word as he suffered through pain. And, Lord, you gave him the revelation to pray for somebody else. And we see a miracle right in our midst today. The pain is gone. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord. You said that we believe these signs and wonders would follow, God. And you said you would confirm your word, hallelujah, as your word is performed through us. So, Lord, we thank you for today that we saw a miracle. Lord, we don't take it lightly, God. Those that are suffering in pain, I pray for the same blessing today, God, that they be pain-free, hallelujah, just like we have seen today. Lord, we know you're real, hallelujah. God, there's nothing that can contest you. You have no equal. You have no rival, hallelujah. So we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, I dare you to say thank you, Lord. If you believe he's a healing God, if you thank God for the miracle that we even see today in our midst, in our worship service, singing on the stage behind us, thank God for the miracle. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Hallelujah, when the saints begin to pray. Glory.
whether you're online or if you're here in the sanctuary. Sister Nuna asked me this morning, are you ready for another Sabbath day? I was like, wow, I like that. Are you ready for another Sabbath day? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I would like to invite you all to stand up and greet each other as we sing our welcome song. Welcome to Wings of Love and Incredible Church. We're so glad you came to join us. This is your home. Wings of Love, soon to be incredible church later this year. Um, we know that that we had uh, just, I mean, I cannot describe to you the number of testimonies that have continued to come in after our Easter brunch celebration. It has was nothing short of incredible, for, forgive the pun, but I, I used it intentionally. Uh, it was nothing short of incredible. We had over 300 people, 30 people gave their life, life to Christ. And as a result, we're seeing many of those folks stick with us um, in this journey. Uh, this past week, we had 69 people on Bible study on a Tuesday night. I thought I'd have a better amen than that. Come on and say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want you to be part of that. If you are not part of our launch team, that is the best way where you can get the information you need so that you can stay uh, tracking with all that is happening with uh, Incredible Church. And so go to IncredibleChurch.org. IncredibleChurch.org. Choose to join the launch team so that you can get all the updates and you can stay connected. Amen. 
Um, and I need to let those who are watching virtually, you can be part of the launch team virtually. All that means is that you're committing to say, I'm going to invite people to be part of this experience. I'm going to serve with my gifts. We have some ways that you can serve virtually. And I'm going to give generously. So we invite you to be part of the launch team no matter where, the, where you are. Now, next week is the third Saturday of the month. And what that means is it's our big serve day. If you're in the building, you'll see a whole bunch of bags and boxes in that back room. That's because each and every third Saturday, we go out to serve our community. Can I get an amen? We go out to serve our community because we believe that the church was never meant to be inside four walls. It was always meant to be in the community, being a transformational part of what God is doing in any given city. And so we want you to be part of our serve day. But I got to switch. Say, I got to switch. I got to switch it up because we will still have worship next week. Now, in the previous third Saturdays, we haven't had worship, but next week we are going to have worship. It'll be abbreviated, abbreviated service. We're going to move it from, we're going to keep it from 12 to 1, just 12 to 1, one hour of power and one, that, that's what Pastor used to say, an hour of power, amen. It'll just be one hour, 12 to 1. It'll give you an opportunity to serve before. For the worship experience and after. And here's what I mean. At 8.30 in the morning, we're going to be giving out food right here at Wings of Love. And so we invite you to join us for that. And then after our worship experience, beginning at 2 o'clock, what time? At 2 o'clock, we're going to be at the Wood Street community. That's the community we've been serving where our unhoused neighbors live. And so we want you to be part of that. Again, we're giving out food and clothing of all other kinds of supplies. So make sure that you are with us for worship and to serve next week on the third Saturday. Is that all right? Amen. And last but not least, you cannot afford to miss Bible study on Tuesday nights. It's not on Wednesday. It's on Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The Lord has been showing up. Honestly, it has just been a blessing to see how God is connecting his people. So you need to get into your word. Join us on Tuesday night and let's continue this in journey as we become incredible church. Let's give God praise as we continue with our worship experience. It is now time for the Believer's Creed. The Believer's Creed. Amen. Oh, Langston, praise the Lord. Thank you. Please stand for the believer's creed. Hold on your Bibles in the right hand. This is the word of God. It is supernatural in origin, eternal in duration, inexpressible in value. the throne and this rain 
of his robe feels this simple. Day and night, angels proclaim. was and is and is to come. Be exalted, be lifted high. King of heaven, be glorified. All creations testify. Your Jehovah, the Lord Most High. Elders cast down their crowns, the angels bow down, as it is in heaven, we'll repeat the sound. Will never get tired, and it'll never grow old. We'll join them singing. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Be exalted, be, exalted, be lifted be high. Lifted Yes. 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 Yes.
Amen. He is amazing. He's awesome. He is matchless. And we're so grateful that we serve a risen King. Can you put your hands together for our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ? Amen, amen, amen. Listen, we're about to get into the word, but before we do, I do just want to uh, mention that, in fact, the gentleman who was singing lead on that last song, Minister Lyle Henderson, is helping to uh, sponsor an event, put on an event uh, next week on April the 20th. Doors open at 5 p.m. It's called Choirs United, amen. They've got choirs coming from all over the country. There's some a choir from Dallas, choir from a few other cities, plus those who are right here in the Bay Area. It's going to be held at the Parks AME Chapel here in Oakland, 476 34th Street here in Oakland. And uh, we would love for you to attend and support that. Again, that's 5 p.m. next Saturday. So you can come here, you can serve, you can worship, and then you can make your way over to Parks AME by 5 Amen. Listen, let's get ready in and get ready for the word and get into the word today. This is the second installment of a series that I started last week called Don't Let It Fade. And my heart for you is, is that post-resurrection, there's a lot of energy that goes into the Easter season. But I don't want you to let the power of Easter to fade throughout the rest of the year. Amen. I want you to hold on to the goodness and the glory and the blessings of our Heavenly Father so that all year long you can be filled with this Spirit. And so that's what we're leaning into today. Will you rise to your feet with me as we get prepared to, for the Word? We're going to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And we're going to just look at one verse. Verse 6. Again, that's Acts chapter 3. That's in the New Testament. So if you're in the Old Testament, you... If, you, if you're seeing books that look like Genesis and Exodus, you need to le lean over to somebody and say, I think I need a little help today. I need a little help. We're in Acts. It is the fourth book of the New Testament. We're in the third chapter and the sixth verse. Even before we read, we want to take the moment and consecrate it to God. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. We give this moment to you. Have your way, not only in this place, but in our hearts. So that upon leaving this place, we can say truly, we have been with the Lord and we are not the same. We thank you for being who you are and we thank you for whose we are now move in this moment. In Jesus' name we do pray. Come on, everybody shouts amen and amen. I, I love the story that we're going to today. And we're only going to give one verse from the story. But it illustrates the power of the passage. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Then he ends with this one word, walk. Will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to walk. You've been in that place too long. It's time to walk. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of our great God. Don't let it fade, part two. Um, many of you will know this on this past Monday, April the 8th, uh, there was a solar eclipse. How many of you know that? Solar eclipse and every major news channel plus many of the local news stations were preparing for this this rare eclipse. Special camera crews were sent on location. Correspondents were put in place. Scientists and professors who are never spoken to were brought to give their opinion and offer their expertise so that they could help us make sense of this spectacle. But all of this attention was not just because of the uniqueness of the event. I want you to know it was a unique event. 
Last time we had a full sol solar eclipse was in 2017, and they are not expecting another one like this, at least in the States, until 2024. But I need to let you know that it wasn't just the uniqueness of the event that caused all of this attention to be given to the solar eclipse. Oh, the solar eclipse. It was also because businesses, tourism offices, hotels, Airbnbs, and media companies wanted to capture this moment in order to maximize the economic opportunity. I wish I had a witness in here. They did not, watch this, want to let this 22-minute moment pass them by. They didn't want to let this this 22-minute experience passed them by. They wanted to capture the moment. By some estimates, the solar eclipse was set to produce $6 billion worth of economic impact. Most of that going to the states and cities along the path of totality. The path of totality was comprised of those places where the moon would totally block out the sun. San Antonio, Austin, and Dallas, Texas, Little Rock, Arkansas, Indianapolis, Indiana, Cleveland, Ohio, and all the way up to Burlington, Vermont, people were preparing to capture the moment because they wanted to maximize the economic opportunity. They, they, they did everything in their power to make sure they didn't let this moment pass them by. I'm trying to talk to you. People traveled from all over the world to make sure the moment didn't pass them by. There are some moments that you cannot afford to let pass by in your life. And what I desire for you is that you would not allow the moments that are of significance with God to pass you by. Uh, uh, don't let the significant moments that you have with God, don't allow them to be eclipsed by the rigor, the busyness, and the distractions that often come with life. Instead, I want to encourage you today to capture the moments that you have with your father. Come on and say amen. With your heavenly father capture those moments max maximize the moments cherish the moments because they are milestones worth remembering when god speaks to you capture the moment when god impresses something on your heart capture the moment when you feel like something is changing inside of you i want to encourage you to capture the moment don't let the eclipse of life just cause you to miss what god is doing in you i want want you to learn how to say it is for God I live and for God I die and whenever he is actually operating in my life I want to make sure that he has my full attention watch this because I want to mark well the moments in my journey where God has shown up to change something radical inside of me and I want to suggest to you today whether you know it or not God is already at work in your life can I get a witness in the building uh, he, he's already at, at work creating moments that are in the present and preparing you for moments that will come in the future. He's already at work. And so I, my job to you for you today is to push you to learn how to identify when God is working and then do everything in your power to make sure that you don't let it pass you by. Because in the, te in the text that we're in today, the text that we're in today, it is, it's a unique experience. And I got to tell you, can I confess real quick to you? Can I confess? I have preached this text many times in the past, and I have never seen what I'm going to show you today. Amen? I, I, I've never seen what I, I've shown you today because so often when we preach this passage, and it's a good passage, y'all, we preach about the fact that here is this lame beggar in the front of the church and people are passing him by. And, and, and that's a worthy thing to preach about. It's a little worthy thing to preach about because it suggests that sometimes we can be holy but not helpful. Uh, I'm trying to talk to somebody today. 
uh, uh, we, 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 can, we can be holy, but we ain't helping nobody. Our, our holiness has no impact because it is not shared with anybody else. It is not demonstrated to anyone uh, one, one else. And, and if I were to preach on that, that would be a good thing to preach on. Uh, uh, but I'm not preaching about that today. Amen. There, there, there is another way you, you can preach this passage. You can preach this passage from the, from the perspective of the beggar, right? The beggar has been in this position for a long time. And when we think about the quick transformation of, of, of his ability to get out of this condition, it suggests that God already wanted to deliver him out of the, the disability that he was in. And it wasn't so much that Peter needed to show up, it was actually that the beggar needed to learn how to trust God. We, we, we could talk about that, but I don't want to talk about that today. Um, um, I want to center our focus on Peter. As a follow-up to our last sermon, we talked about how Peter had been in this experience of, of, of getting disillusioned after Jesus got out of the grave. He was kind of unsure about what his place was. And, and, and I talked to you last week about how that happens for us sometimes. If we're honest, we kind of go up and down with God. We get in these moments where we're on fire for him, and then there's these other moments where it just kind of feels like like maybe we are disconnected and we're not sure what God wants from us and we're not sure how to move forward in our lives. Amen. Has anybody been there before? Amen. Amen. And, 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 and I appreciate you uh, uh, sharing, David, in your prayer about pain because sometimes it's the pain of life that causes us to feel like we've been disconnected from God. And, and I think Peter was feeling a, a, a sort of pain, the kind of pain that comes when you are unclear about what God is actually doing. You, you know he's moving, but you're just not sure what he's up to. You know he still sits on the throne, but you're not confident that he's actually operating in the way that you want him to operate. Do I have any witnesses in the building that sometimes it's not that you have given up on God. You're just not sure what he's doing. And so it's a little frustrating. And so here it is. Watch this. Watch this. I want you to not look at the beggar. I, not, I don't want you to look at the dysfunctional church that he was standing in front of. I want you to look at Peter because Peter has an experience that is worth noting in this text. Here he is. He sees this, this beggar at the front of the gate or at the front of the, uh, of the synagogue and he's about to walk into the synagogue. But before he walks into the synagogue, he looks at the beggar and he says, beggar, I need you to look at me calling for his attention suggesting that he doesn't he wants to actually humanize the beggar can I just put this on notice real quick sometimes we are serving from a, pay, a place of condescension this ain't even in the message but can I push you today sometimes we are serving from a place of I'm better than you right Sometimes we're serving from a place where, where, where we have already judged why the person is in the condition that they're in before we've heard anything about their story. Do I have any company in the building? So sometimes we have already we have already written the narrative we have already cast the judgment we have already determined that this person is in this condition often because whether we state it or not because they deserve it. And that is serving from a place of haughtiness and pride and, 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 and condescension where you have now placed yourself in a better place than them. But I wonder if we could get some old religion because old religion used to say, but for the grace of God, there go I. In other words, I could be in that condition. I could be messed up. I could be broken. And the truth is, if you look over your life, the truth is you have been there before company in the building I got somebody who can witness and testify to that we may, maybe not in that exact condition but we have all been a place in a place watch this that we never thought we would end up in we have all been in a place that we never thought it would happen to us and then it happens and you're like, man, I, I, I got to figure out how to navigate through this. And so, and so Peter, Peter wants to humanize the beggar. So he says, look at me. Beggar's head is down. Beggar's head is, 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 is derelict. He's, he's feeling the heaviness of his condition. And Peter says, pick your head up. Look at me. You are no less than me. 
We are all on this journey together. Pick your head up. Look at me. And then Peter does something amazing. He doesn't give him a dollar. He doesn't, he doesn't resolve his financial request. He says, silver and gold, I don't have. But I got something better than that. In the name of Jesus Christ, watch this. Here it is. He says, walk. But I want you to understand the command for him to walk was actually a command for him to live. Y'all got to get it. Uh, he, 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 had, he had been so much in his condition, watch this, that he had not actually been living up to the standard and the expectation that God had for his life. So when he tells him to walk, he's actually telling him, brother, it's time to live. It's time to live according to God's plan for your life. It's time for you to meet the expectations and the blessings that God has for you. It's time for you to live. You've been living far below where you have, where God has planned for you and now is the moment where I'm calling you out of your stupor I'm calling you out of your dysfunction I'm calling you out of your 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 heartache and I want you to learn how to accept the reality of your life and not allow the reality of your life to dictate the future of your life because God has commanded you to live uh, uh, and, and in this moment in this moment Peter does something for us, y'all. Peter helps us out. He helped the baker, but I think he helped us more. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because Peter has a significant transition in this moment. In this moment, watch this. There's three things that happen. In this moment, firstly, Peter gives up self-reliance in exchange for divine reliance. Okay, you're going to walk with me. Please get this. Peter relied on himself when he was betrayed by Jesus. Peter relied on himself when he decided to cut the ear of the servant of the high priest off. Peter relied on himself when he went back fishing after the resurrection of Jesus. But after the beachside breakfast and those 10 days in the prayer of prayer in the upper room, something has changed in Peter. It's a wonderful change. I think he would agree with Tremaine Hawkins when she said, a wonderful change has come over me. You changed my life complete. And now I sit at the Savior's feet. He tells the man, look at him. And the first thing he said is, is what he used to rely on. Watch this. Peter used to rely on his ability to get financial financial strength or financial resources in order to exist. But now he says to the blind beggar, I don't have any money to give you. You got to get it. He used to rely on his ability to go fishing. He used to rely on his skill set and his talent. He used to rely on his, his abilities, those natural abilities. But now he says, I don't have them anymore. You, 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 you're, you're, you're missing it. You're missing it. Peter was so comfortable with relying on himself. Now he has, he's had a change. Say a change. Because, because the old Peter, I think, would have said, hold on, a blind beggar. Um, um, I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to sell the fish, and then I'm going to bring you back the money. Um, but, but, but he learned how not to depend on on his livelihood to sustain his life and discovered that I can rely on my heavenly father. And so now Peter understands I don't have to rely on my own strength. I can rely on the strength of my father. And so instead of passing on to you the process of relying on your own strength, I want you to learn how to rely on your heavenly father who is Jesus Christ. Furthermore, I think, I think he is communicating to the man, I... I've learned also not only to re not rely on myself, watch this, but I've also learned not to rely on other people. Okay, no, no company in the building. Uh, um, the beggar is sitting at the gate waiting for others to help him. And Peter is like, I want to give you something that will not require you to rely on any other human. Uh, because Peter has learned people are fr flaky. Come on, somebody. People are unpredictable. People are unreliable. I wish I had a witness in the building. And he knows this not just because of what, uh, what has been done to him, but watch this, what he has done to others. 
Okay, I got to come down your street. I promise I'm going to get back to disconnect ourselves from. But before you are able to actually grow in Christ, you got to admit what's wrong with you. You got to admit the offenses that you have created. You got to admit the problems that you have caused. You got to admit the mistakes that you have made. You got to admit the injuries that you have caused. You got to admit the pain that you have allowed somebody else to go through because of your decisions. Is there anybody in the building that can just be honest and say, yep, stuff, people have done stuff to me. But I've done stuff myself. I've done stuff myself. So the evidence, watch this, watch this. The evidence that I can't totally rely on other people is the fact that I'm not totally reliable. Do I have any company in the building? Uh, I, 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 I have not always shown up when I said I was going to show up. Come on, somebody. I haven't always been on time when I said I would be on time. I haven't always kept my word when I said I was going to keep my word. I haven't always come through when I said I was going to come through. So I cannot cause, I cannot expect what I have not given. Amen? Amen. Watch this and watch this. Oh, I'm going to move on. This ain't in the text. Sandra, I'm sorry. I got to push on this. Can I push just a little bit right here? I want to push. Here it is. Here it is. Um, watch this. That should cause me the recognition of my own frailty should cause me to give more grace to others. Ooh we, ooh we. This is just for the mature Christians in the building. You have the right to be angry. Watch this. You have the right to be angry, but because of the grace of God on your life, God is asking you to release your anger so that you can expose the grace that he has given to you and share it with somebody else. Amen. Amen. Because watch this. If you were treated, watch this, the way that you want to treat other people sometimes, you would never have a second chance. You would never have another opportunity. But God keeps giving you another open door. He keeps giving you a new season. He keeps giving you a new blessing. He keeps giving you more favor. So it's time for you to pay it forward. Do I have company in the building that can say, thank you, God, and now I got to give it to somebody else? Amen. 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 Uh, uh, Peter has learned, can't rely on others, can't rely on myself, I got to rely on God. And so here's the question I want you to ask yourself, in what ways am I relying on myself or others instead of relying on God? That's the one I want you to pose yourself this week. I want you to ask yourself, uh, uh, in what ways am I trying to use my own strength? Am I trying to use my own abilities instead of doing what God would have me to do? In what ways am I expecting somebody else to do for me what God wants to do for me? I'm trying to get in your business today. I promise you I am. But it's so that you don't miss the moment of God's movement in your life. Because, because Peter has gone through a change, y'all. He's not the same Peter that was at the beachside after the resurrection. He's a new Peter, and just like he has been changed, so you and I can be changed, we can become brand new. The audacity of the gospel is that you can be a new person, that you can be a new creature. I said it last week, I gotta say it again. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Uh, and and, and I, I push this this is my longest point I'm going to make the other two shorter but here it is I got to push this just a little bit for, further because I think I think what we have missed in the text is actually what all of the writers throughout scripture have been trying to get us to recognize yes God performs miracles but the miracle that God performed mainly in this text is not what he did for the beggar but what he did in Peter because Peter is now learning how to rely on God in a new way and this is what the Bible writers have been talking about all throughout the Bible can I give you some scripture scripture to prove my point Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 says trust in the Lord uh, with all your 
heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. I wish I had some, some witnesses in the building. Jeremiah 17, 7, and 8. We talked about this in Bible study. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I got to give you one more. Matthew 6 verse 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. All I'm trying to tell you is, is that when you put your faith in God, he does everything well. He does everything well. He's saying, trust me because I got you. Trust me because I got plans for you. Trust me because I got a design for your life. Trust me because I will change you. Okay. Okay, Peter not only learns, he not only gives up self-reliance for divine reliance. Watch this. But he gives up material priorities in exchange for spiritual priorities. Oh, this is a change, y'all. We got to shift. I want you to shift your priorities. Say, Lord, help me to shift my priorities. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Here it is. Uh, Peter uh, 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 has a, a change in his priorities. I want to deepen our understanding of how Peter's priorities have changed. His first thought is not to seek a material solution, but he's seeking a spiritual solution. Watch this. To a natural problem. <sighs> you, 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 you know, I want to talk to you. You know things have really begun to change when your first, first thought is, what does God want me to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you have really begun to change when your first thought is, what's God's plan for me in this situation? You have really begun to change when, when your, your first thought is, God, how do you want me to respond to these people? Come on and say amen. Uh, when your first thought is, Lord, Lord, Lord um, I know what I want to do, but help me not to do what I want to do. Help me to do what you would have me to do. Do I have any company in the building? Um, uh, um, you know things are shifting when you're asking God, which way do I go? And it's a beautiful thing to experience the shift because sometimes it will surprise you. You will make a decision and you'll wonder, where in the world did that come from? Uh, um, you, you will quote a scripture and then say, did I say that? Did I really... Did I, that really just come out of my mouth? Uh, you will offer to pray for someone and then pause and wonder, what in the world has gotten into me? Um, when your spiritual priorities are your first priorities, it shapes your life in a way that can make things in your life feel like it's surprising. Um, and maybe just like a little bit of that solar eclipse. You know, one of the things that so, so um, um, resonated with me about this solar eclipse and how it relates to our relationship with God, one of the things is that as I watched, we didn't have a, a total eclipse here. We only had like a third of the, of the sun that was covered by the moon. So most of us probably went throughout our, our day, didn't even know that you have, uh, that there was an eclipse happening. Most of us probably, that was the case. In fact, I wouldn't have known it unless my two little boys were like, Daddy, are we going to watch the eclipse? So I went on Amazon and bought some eclipse glasses. Come on and say amen. Uh, got some eclipse glasses and, and there we were trying to watch the eclipse and, and we had the glasses and we're looking up and it was only about about a third of it and we kept waiting for more of it to be covered but instead of more of it being covered it just kind of moved to another side of the sun that, that was all we got and in fact if we had not been looking up at the sun we wouldn't have even known that was covered but here's what was more shocking to me as I watched the areas and the cities where they were having what was called total totality, which is when the moon fully covers the sun. As I was watching these areas, the thing that stood out to me is that it wasn't, watch this, until 
the moon two or three percent of the sun left shining there was still light dispersing all over the land y'all y'all gotta get it y'all gotta get it uh, 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 when your when your priorities begin to change it may not be that everything has changed you may just have one more percentage more of what you had of Jesus last year but because you got a little more light and because you got a little more love and because you have a little more of his spirit what will happen is is that that primary priority will begin to shed light on the rest of your priorities and then you will begin to see your life change I'm trying to talk to somebody who thinks you have to do it all at once thinks that you gotta fix it all at the same time all I want you to learn how to do is trust God in one area of your life and watch the light from that area begin to change all the other areas of your life because the last time I checked he says all you need is faith as a mustard seed and you'll be able to move a mountain I'm wondering is there any mustard seed faith people in the building that can say I don't have all that I need of God but I got a little bit of faith I got a little bit of hope I got a little bit of love I got a little bit of joy and this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away is there anybody in the building that can say thank you for the little I got thank you for the little I got yeah I want more of God yeah I want to grow in him yeah I want things to change yeah I want more money in the bank yeah I want the situation to turn around but I'm glad I'm not doing it by myself I got enough of Jesus and the little bit of Jesus I got can inform the rest of everything that I'm going through I dare you to give God a praise because you got some of Jesus and you're walking with him today Amen. Amen. Peter has changed, y'all. Oh, I'm going to move on. Peter has changed. Layla, Peter has changed. I want you to, Trent, Peter has changed. He's changed. Paulette, Peter has changed. I want you to hear me. He's changed, and you can too. He's changed. He's not the same person no more. He's become a new creature. And, and, and I want you to understand, the reason why I have good authority to preach about this partial, the partial aspect of holy God is because Paul says that we see through a glass dimly. We know in part and we prophesy in part, which means that we got to take what we got and use it for his glory. We also see in Peter's very own life, he didn't even after this point always get it right. But the thing that he had was an unshakable faith that his father was living inside of him. And because he knew his daddy was in his heart, come on somebody. Even when he faltered, watch this, he never regressed. Ooh, that's just for somebody today. It ain't in my notes. He faltered, but he didn't regress. That, 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 means, that means he never went back to the beachside condition that he was in. Do you understand? He never went back there. Yeah, he made some mistakes after this point, but he never went back to his old self. <sighs> Peter can change, and so can you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And he changed not only because he gave up his self-reliance for divine reliance. He changed not only because he gave up his material priorities for spiritual priorities. But he also, Peter, changed because he gives up, watch this, betraying Jesus in exchange for boldly representing Jesus. I'm in your Bible. I promise you I am. I'm in your Bible. I haven't even left the one verse that we have been talking about. He betrayed Jesus three times. And watch this. 
Post that betrayal, this is the second of three proclamations Peter makes about Jesus that serve as somewhat of a reversal of his betrayal. He previously didn't want to be associated with Jesus, but now he is boldly proclaiming, Jesus is all I have. I wish I had somebody in here. He does this not in, he watch this, he does this not out in the community where there is no threat of rejection, but he does it right in front of the synagogue. The very place that would have been the kind of people who could ridicule him and judge him and exclude him. Peter is not concerned about their acceptance of him personally. He is primarily concerned about their acceptance of Jesus eternally. You got to get the shift. He's desiring that they would discover the truth of his love, the beauty of his word, and the blessing of his presence. So he's not concerned about the consequences that may come for his actions watch this he's only concerned about representing Jesus he is so determined that even if they reject him he says I'll represent Jesus even if they ridicule him he says I'll represent Jesus even if they scold him he says I'll represent Jesus even if they lie on him he says I'm going to represent Jesus they may turn against me I'll represent Jesus they may harm me I'll represent Jesus they may they hate me I'll represent Jesus no matter what the consequence is Peter has made up in his mind that he is going to represent Jesus because he has decided it is for God I live and God I die Peter has learned a thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand but not none will come near me Peter has learned the Lord is my refuge and strength a very present help in time of trouble so even if I get persecuted I got somewhere to run to the Peter has learned though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me because his rod and his staff they comfort me I dare you to understand that Peter has gotten it clear that there is nothing better than he can do than be an ambassador, be a representative, be a soldier, be a way maker for his father. And I'm wondering, is there anybody in the building that can say, I'm taking up that same mantle. I'm going to represent Jesus. My family may not understand. The people around me may not understand. The folks in my class may not understand. The folks on my team may not understand. The folks on the job may not understand but I'm going to represent I'm going to represent Jesus because I realize, watch this, wherever I am, God is trying to be there too. You got to get this. He, he says, he says, I'm trying to show light in the midst of darkness. What does that mean? What that means is, that means is you didn't just get your job for yourself. I wish I had somebody in the building. You ain't in your neighborhood just for yourself. I wish I had somebody in the building. You're not even in your family just for yourself. I wish I had somebody in the building. You are there because God's like, I shined light into your heart and I want you to shine light into somebody else's heart. I want you to say that no matter what they say about me, the one thing they will be able to say when I pass from this earth is that I stood for Christ. I stood for the word of the Lord. I stood for his love. I stood for his sacrifice. They may not be able to fully comprehend, but in the sweet by and by, they'll understand it better. Do I have any company in the building that can say the greatest thing that I can have said about me is that I am a representative of Jesus. I, 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 I want somebody to say, yo, that man was sure crazy, but he knew the Lord. I wish I had somebody in the building. Uh, uh, he, 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 he had a radical way about going about things, but he knew Jesus. Come on and say amen. I want somebody you're able to say that even when he wanted to do his own thing, he had to be restricted by the power of the Holy Spirit. And instead of doing his own thing, he did what God asked him to do. I'm trying to preach to you today. Peter has changed and we can change too. And I want to challenge you. I feel this push. I want to challenge you that there is some obstacle in your life Ooh. Ooh. That, that is more of a concern for you than Jesus is. Oh, I know this is the part you're supposed to shout and celebrate, but I got to challenge you real quick. Uh, uh, there's something in your life that, that is more important to you 
than even your relationship with your father. I want, I want you to get it. And, and I want you to say, today, I must make an exchange. Because, because I've learned from Peter's life that he figured out the greatest life hack there has ever been. And that there ever will, uh, will, will be. He realized that when I make up my mind and when I decide to represent Jesus, I'm not here for myself. I don't just get more and gain more and glean more. I don't just get status, popularity, position, and prestige. But instead, watch this, I become someone who Jesus uses to turn people's hearts towards him. And guess what the benefit that I get? The Bible says that he'll give you the peace that passes all, <laughs> all understanding. And it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. David, I'm done. Uh, it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I think that we have underrated the blessing of peace. I, I think most of the struggles that we go through in our lives are because we don't have peace. We don't have peace about who we are. We don't have peace about what God has placed for us we don't have peace with our relationships we don't have peace with our jobs but I dare you to become a representative for Jesus and what Jesus says is I'll give you peace peace that your job can't give peace that your relationships can't give peace that your money can't give peace that your family can't give peace that your success can't give I'll give you peace and watch this the peace that I give will keep you from being depressed the peace that I give will preach keep you from going crazy the peace that I give will keep you from losing your mind do I have any company in the building that says God I want your peace it's a time for a change y'all it's time for a change it's time for a change it's time for a transformation you don't have to stay in the place you're in. You don't have to stay in this place. You don't have to stay in this darkness. You don't have to stay in this, this, this evil. You don't have to stay in this uncertainty. You don't have to stay in the mistakes that you've made. What Jesus says is, I will give you the peace that passes all understanding and it will guard your heart and your mind. This is why the writer could say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. This is why Paul could say, I am more than a conqueror in him who loved us. I dare you to say today, I am stepping out of what I used to be and I'm stepping in to what God has called me to be. I'm making a change today because I desire to be a representative for Jesus. If you want something that lasts, y'all, can I, can you hear my heart today? If you want something that lasts, something that doesn't fade, then I want to invite you to give your life to Jesus, maybe again. This is for everybody today. Maybe this is your first time. Maybe you're coming back to him. Maybe you just need to say, God, I'm just reaffirming my relationship with you because I want to change. If that's you, will you just stand to your feet right now? Just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I want to change. I want to change. I want to change. I want to change. I feel impressed by the Spirit. Will you lift your hands? I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Even if you're watching online, lift your hands right where you are. Lift your hands. I'm going to pray a prayer for a shift from self-reliance to divine reliance. From material priorities to spiritual priorities. And from disowning Jesus to being a representative for Jesus. Amen. Will you lift your hands? Here it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray right now over your people, both in the building and those who are watching online. Lord, that this would be a significant moment of transition. 
Lord, where we will no longer lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways we will acknowledge you and lean to your understanding. Father, there are some material things that are causing our, uh, giving, giving our heart a, a, a desire to go after them, Father. And right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you help us to no longer desire the material over the spiritual, but instead desire the spiritual over the material. And right now, Jesus, I pray that, that you will cause us all to desire most importantly to be your representative, to be your ambassador, to share love, to give hope, to inspire joy, and to be the Christians that you've called us to be. And so now we surrender this prayer to you. We surrender this covering to you. You can drop your hands, but keep your head bowed and repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I love you. I'm not what I should be, but I'm not what I used to be. So I give my heart to you. Take control of my life. I want to be, I want to be more like you. So right now, here I am, here I stand, I am yours in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody shouts, amen and amen. Will you give God a good praise in this building for the transformation that's happening right now? Will you give God a good praise in this building for the change that is happening right now? Will you give God a good praise in this building for the newness that's happening right now? Will you give God a good praise in the building for the transition that's happening right now? Will you give God a good praise in the building for the new levels that are taking place right now? I dare you, give God a good praise in the building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Jesus. Hey, you're worthy, Jesus. Hey, you're worthy, Jesus. Yes, you're Elohim. You're El Shaddai. You're more than enough. You're Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. Thank you, God, for being better to me than I could be to myself. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I dare you. I dare you. If you're comfortable, just find one person and tell them we're going to make it. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't even know if I'm in the right key, but I've been hearing this all day. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship. We worship. You are worthy. You Come on, song is simple, just says, you are Alpha. You, you are Alpha and Omega. And Omega. We worship. We worship. You are Lord. You are worthy to be praised. This song says we give you all.
the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Make the change this week. Don't let the Spirit fade. Make the change. Ask yourself, God, how can I prioritize your priorities over my own? How can I rely on you instead of myself? How can I be your representative in every place I go? Amen? Amen. Listen, this is the moment in the worship experience where we take an opportunity just to give back to God a portion of what he's given to us. Here at Wings, we, we practice the spirit of generosity because we believe it's one of those godly principles that God says, I'll bless you if you are a blessing. Amen? And so we invite you to give and give generously, but not out of obligation or out of guilt because the Bible says that God loves a, a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Which all that means is giving is a blessing because it's an opportunity. Amen. To give out of what God has given to you. It's the same idea. We give grace. We give, we give love. Amen. And we give financially as part of our relationship with God. And so there's a few options for you to give on the screen right now. Say it with me. Say W-O-L. MM88.org slash give. W O L M M 88.org slash give. You can give there, or if you are using Cash App, which some of us do, you can use the the uh, the handle dollar sign wings love. Dollar sign wings love. Not wings of love, just dollar sign wings love. And we know that you will. Be a and also we want to say that if you are giving specifically for Incredible Church, when you go to the website, there's a little drop down menu that says Incredible Church Launch. And those funds will be set aside to help us launch the new ministry that God has called us to launch. I got to tell y'all, I'm so excited. God is doing some stuff. I'm hoping to be able to share in the next couple weeks what he is doing. But here's what I need you to do for me is do two things. One, keep this, this new ministry that God is birthing in prayer. Will you put it on your prayer list every day? Amen. Will you do that for me? And then I need you to be a committee of one to say, I can't keep the good thing that God is doing to myself. You've got friends, you've got family, you've got brothers and sisters, co-workers, neighbors, then I want you to invite them in. You can invite them to Bible study. You can invite them to worship. You can invite them to come serve with us. But just be, be, be an ambassador that says, I'm going to invite everybody I come in contact with, and I know the Lord will continue to add to our number just as he did in the early church. And so we're going to pray over the gifts that are going to be given, and then we're going to ask God's blessing on the service. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless these gifts. May you multiply them for your name's honor and glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody shouts, amen. Please serve the people of God. Amen. for the benediction please rise for the benediction don't forget next week is serve week and as i mentioned earlier we're still having worship you can come and meet us at 8 30 in the morning to give away food right here worship with us from 12 to 1 and then we'll head over to wood street from 2 to 4 to share in the ministry there with our unhoused neighbors also please please note this i didn't mention this earlier but may 3rd can you say may 3rd May 3rd, Incredible Church is going to be participating in an entrepreneurial summit here in the city of Oakland. You'll hear more in the email, but I'm telling you, God is opening up opportunities for us not only to have worship, but to be transformational in our city. Can you say amen? And so we're excited about that. And last but not least, next Saturday at 5 p.m., Choirs United at Park AME Church, 476 
34th Street here in Oakland. Let's support our dear brother, Minister Lyle Henderson. Let's receive the benediction. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us in this moment with the willingness to change so that we can go from where we are to where you want us to be. Keep your people. Give peace to your people and favor your people with your spirit. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody shouts. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday for Bible study and then next week for worship. God bless you.